Hello everybody, it's Ihab with you. I want to tell you that I get this question really common from my medical college colleagues. Medical college colleagues? Whoa, whoa. Okay, my colleagues at the medical college. They keep asking me why some people um, gain weight so quickly and why some others don't. Now we clearly can know that there's a difference in metabolism. Some doctors make you lose hope by telling you that it's genetic and it's hopeless, you can't do anything about it, surgery is the only way and you can't afford the surgery, whatever. So I, in this video today, I'm going to show you that you actually can have influence over your own genes. This is by stimulating certain bacteria, which is considered good. Don't panic, it's fine. It's just good bacteria inside your intestines. An experiment was done at Washington University where they brought an obese person and a lean person. Now they got the microbial gut bacteria from both of them and they placed it into two sterile mice that had no microbes of their own. After they did that, they gave a healthy meal to those mice and they observed that the mice who received uh, microbes from the lean person was perfectly fine, it was in the perfect health. While the mice that received the microbes from the fat or obese person, it gained so much weight and developed metabolic disorders like diabetes too. To understand this phenomena better, I'm gonna explain to you how this exactly happens. So there are certain types of bacteria inside our gut. I'd like to call them the bad guys. And those bad guys take food, no matter if it was healthy or junk, and turn it into something that we can absorb. For example, if you eat some certain type of plants, you have the sugar cellulose, uh, which is undigestible for us. Those bacteria change it into sugars that we are able to digest and further turn them into fats and energy. Some other bacteria, on the other hand, they act by placing some chemicals inside your gut and those chemicals manage to go to your brain and to your liver, which I'll be explaining in a bit and they tend to influence our gene expression allowing us to have increased metabolic rates. The scientists at Washington University further extended this experiment and allowed the two different microbe types, the bad guys and the good guys, to mix inside one mice. And when this mice was giving a healthy meal, the number of the good bacteria was able to overcome the number of bad bacteria and therefore it stayed lean. However, when the same mice was giving junk food, high in fat content, then the, the bad guys were able to overcome and affect the metabolism of this mice. If you are still thinking that eating a salad is a healthy choice for you, think again. If you have a very low number on, of the good bacteria inside your intestines, your body is going to convert this plate of salad or jar of salad into a very sugary meal that will make you fat because our bodies have the ability to change sugars into fat once we don't need those sugars. So if our brain wanted to talk to our bacteria through the intestines, it will send the impulses through the nerves. And then the nerve will change this electrical impulse into a neurotransmitter. This neurotransmitter passes and gives an order to the cells in the intestines and therefore can decrease or increase the amount of bacteria and blah blah blah. So actually the brain could talk to the bacteria. The bacteria, on the other hand, can do the same thing by producing substances that is very similar to the bacteria, the neurotransmitters, which can also influence the brain. Now, scientists have proven today that bacteria are able to produce serotonin, which is a hormone needed for you to become happy. And that is really promising because they found out that there's a link between the good bacteria inside your gut and your mood. Bacteria is able as well to control your appetite by placing some chemicals inside your intestine and the brain perceives it as, I need to stop eating right now, I'm full. Although you might not be as full as you think. So those you know, chemical types can control the appetite of your brain. Bacteria, the good ones I'm talking about, are able to influence your metabolism by influencing the genes in your liver and in your brain. This is so interesting because if doctors tell you you have a genetic disorder, that's why you're obese, well, you might think that genes are some things that you can play with. If you give them some substances, you can reactivate some genes that weren't activated, and this is how you increase your own metabolism. It's really simple. You just have to enrich yourself, actually not yourself, your intestines with great amount of good bacteria that you need. And I've personally done this by eating fermented foods like yogurt, like many other st stuff you can find on the internet. Make sure you're not sensitive or allergic to those and they will help you so much in losing weight. To sum up everything I said, 
there's a connection between bacteria and your brain. The bacteria is able to influence your brain, increase metabolism, decrease appetite, increase your mood by elevating the serotonin levels, and you are able to influence your genes by making the metabolism much more efficient. That's it for this video today. I hope you guys love the content. I'm planning to make another video on linking vitamins and obesity. I want you to subscribe to be able to see that. And in my future, I'm also going to be talking about the new drug that is treated for coronavirus. I'm going to tell you if it's effective or no. And that drug is hydroxychloroquine, if I'm not drunk. Yeah. Stay happy, stay safe, and see you next time. If you are still thinking that eating a healthy salad is ideal for you, think again. If you have a very low number of the good guys inside your intestomach, intestomach. One, two, three. If you are stink, you are. If you are still thinking that eating a salad is ideal for you, well, you should think again because simply you may be giving. Stop it, please.